Hello, and welcome to another episode of Drawing on Fridays, the Landon Huber Experience Show. In this episode, I'm going to be finishing up the Cyclops, which I started in episode 7, and you can see that by going to the link in the description, and you can watch the genesis of this piece in episode 7. Um... You can see what I have here. I'm going to be taking it from this to a more refined drawing and then stick around at the end. I'll be showing you the final inks of this piece. So let's get started. Set timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes counting down. I'm going to try to uh, look over, keep an eye on my audio because the last couple episodes it my audio uh, cut out in the middle of the episode and it made me have to resort to using only the camera audio which is less than ideal alright here's something I'm going to try to add a little shadow like this strand is causing a little shadow on them right there So, um, just a little, just a little bit here. Oh, crap. Sorry about the camera there. Um, let me check that, make sure I didn't totally mess that up. Oh, looks okay. All right. So this light over here causes a little bit of a shadow on my paper. Hopefully that's not bothering you too much. And the main thing you'll see me doing in these episodes is fine tuning these drawings. Um, and then you get to see in the end how it the ultimate fine tuning happens where it um, where you all right show you the final inks you can see over here he's holding like a, a skull so I'm gonna work on that skull for a little while here I want to come back and uh, start doing episodes for season two of Drawing on Fridays, which will be um, after I do 26 episodes of season one, I'm going to take a hiatus and recalibrate for a while and then start making more episodes. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm not uh I'm not in a real talky talky mood today. But uh, maybe I'll just focus more on the drawing here. You see right there I just made his knuckle a little bit smaller. See so these little fine tuning things, you know. All this area in here, when I ink it, I'm gonna make it mostly black with just a few little white specks in there. So the more white you add, the more you start to gray out the effect and if you want that effect of the stark contrast actually you need to not be adding too much gray 
And one uh, one of the tricks is to try to have areas of stark contrast and those are kind of like little areas that your eye kind of is attracted to because this same rule applies in painting that your eye is attracted to the area of highest contrast. Now, because I, I like to draw detail, that's something that I actually uh, have to consciously think of sometimes because I have a tendency to get a little bit carried away with the detail. Because I like detail, but... Sometimes the detail can be screwing you up a little bit, you know? Truly oh, drips coming from him. Now, something about the eye, I'm going to, it, it looks okay, but it, it doesn't quite look mean enough to me, so I think what needs to happen is that it just needs to be moved up a bit more. Like, I don't know. veins in his eyes. This looks a little bit better. Just trying to make him look a little bit more sinister there. Defining his cheekbones a bit more here. But yeah, um, one thing I was considering doing when I come back for season two of Drawing on Fridays is actually letting these go on for a little bit longer than a half hour. Um, you know, usually when I'm when I'm working on something and I'm not thinking of time, then I can really just get in there and do the best job possible, but when you have that clock ticking in the back of your head, it can be a little bit frustrating because you're, you're thinking about time. Which in one way is good because you can, it can help you practice your speed and it can help you, you know, get better at certain things. But, in some ways, it kind of distracts you from just what you should be thinking of, which is just the art itself. What I'm, again, what I'm doing here is just defining these, these things which are more or less quickly indicated before deciding where I want to go black with shapes or darken the areas a bit more create that the kind of interesting feeling of shadow and this is another lesson I've been learning is don't be afraid to like let things disappear not everything needs to be totally defined you know the, the, the main the most important thing is that the main overall image of what you're doing has the impact that you want and the details the details are, are not as important as that actually I think you want to be able to read what this is from a distance now 
Let's see here. Maybe a bit of a gray in there. Cross hatch some line work in there when I ink it. And then these sort of lines are indicating because basically this is his skin on the and then on the on his back here it's like he's got these little pock marks and texture things happening on his skin and then he's got this crazy cyclops hair and uh I'm usually pretty um, conscious about little areas that I want to either just use hatching or cross hatching because cross hatching is another effect you know if you just cross hatch everywhere it can have a tendency to monotonize the overall look of your piece as well as um, you know you're not getting enough very I mean I guess it's the same reason but you're, you're not varying up the, the look enough and so the eye won't rest or or get engaged in certain areas you know above others you know Kind of goes back to that same thing I was talking about earlier about let's make this nail a little bit longer about keeping in uh, areas keeping in mind the areas of contrast you know I, I want this nail to be longer too because I'm, I'm thinking of shapes like the, the shape of this hand you know I don't want it to be uniform. So if everything is like in this perfect like uniform shape, it's not as appealing to me as if you have kind of one sticking out a little bit farther, one pulling back. And it has a, a, a an overall um, feel of going together, but at the same time, um, what's the word? staying away from it being too like identical or um, symmet symmetrical that's the word and my brain's not working good today but that's not unusual for me <laughs> bad brain they say that I have a bad brain. Some people will know what that song is. Um, talented musician and artist Mike Hoffman. You guys should check out his YouTube channel. He's a good artist. Hmm. All right, let's start working on these stones. So the this side of the plane of the stones will be more dark and black. But then there's going to be... See, I could spend a long time working on those stones. And, um, oh, it looks like the... Audio is still recording, so we're in business. That's good. Just looked over and checked that. Um, yeah. 
so to get these stones done as quickly as is necessary for this video is going to be a challenge but hopefully you guys kind of see the enough of the process to be highly entertained or kind of kind of see my thinking you know thinking process of when I create a piece of art happy new years happy new years to you guys um, it's uh, I don't know sometimes around the holidays I I get a little bit depressed that's a strange thing I, I'm not the only one that feels that way and it's hard to say exactly why that is I think you kind of I mean I, I I feel multiple ways I you know I feel happy and then has something to do I think with like expectation or you know it's like you you want Christmas to be this happy time but maybe there's something in your life that's making you not so happy and so it doesn't live up to your expectations I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out actually what it is that causes the, the Christmas blues, you know, or the end, the end of the year blues, but um, I, I enjoy this time of year though. I think by the time you guys have seen this, Christmas will be over and it'll be more New Year's time. Time to set the old New Year's resolutions. And, uh, of course, people that might watch this video six months from now, it's not going to be New Year's, it's going to be middle of summer, but the time of the release of this video will be around New Year's. And, um, yeah, I have, um, I'm just going to quickly promote a few things. Um, I have a really cool, uh, Etsy store. It's called landonhuberart.etsy.com where I sell the final versions of these drawings that I'm working on here in these videos they're fully colored um, some are oil paintings some are acrylic paintings some are like this kind of digitally colored line art but they're awesome and um, <clears throat> all right let's let's see what time how much time we got left here Oh, we got about 12 minutes. All right. Twelve minutes. But yeah, head over to landonhuberart.etsy.com. You'll see the link uh, in the description. Uh, I also do commissions. Um, I do charge for commissions because, well, I'm a working artist and I don't do things for free I got to eat and live and pay bills just like everybody else but for what you get um, I think my prices are reasonable but anyway you can check the link in the description if you're interested in that um, so yeah Check that out. Um, 
But definitely go check out my Etsy shop, guys. I mean, I offer you t-shirts and prints of some really cool art. And uh, I've seen what <clears throat> um, they look like after they're printed, and they look pretty awesome. So it's good quality stuff. You'll get it in a reasonable amount of time. And you will enjoy it. If you like the, the artwork, you will enjoy the final product that you receive in the mail. Sorry, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of close in on this um, skull here for a minute. Give him a little bit more rendering. And I'm trying again, again, I'm, I'm thinking of the way the lines move, but I'm also thinking of lighting. Lighting is key if uh, you want to be an artist. You know, if you can't think in terms of lighting, you're going to be limiting your your ability to create images. You know, everything is really boils down to the lighting. You know, it's good to know anatomy and and everything like that. You know, the more knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better, um, for sure, for sure, uh, of how things look, study, or just observe uh, the way that things look, you know. Um, you know, if it's in your, if it's in your head, it's, it'll come out on, in your art, so have to kind of retain that stuff that's in your head. Yeah, yeah there's a few kind of things I want to finagle with on here. This is a... I'm using quite a soft pencil here too. This is a... This is a 9B pencil. And one of the reasons I'm using it is just so you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. But another reason I like using soft pencils for the kind of finishing pencil stage is just because of the ease of use. You know, once your pencil is too hard, you, you have to work really hard, you know, to make any kind of an indication. But with these soft, softer pencils, even though they are smudgy, I don't mind that so much. It kind of just adds to the overall effect. But it's um just lets you it just frees you up to draw, you know. I don't need to be pressing down so hard with all my might. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, all right. I don't know, I think it's getting better. Like these things over here are kind of like sides of the cave. So he's like in this cave and then there's this big uh, thing of rocks right here. But anything else I would do at this point is really just fine tuning, you know. Um, check the time again. I got about six, six and a half minutes left of the episode. You have one strand that kind of flows out there. Another strand that kind of flows over there and then I'll go in there with a... I like to do these strandly things that kind of give the piece a movement, you know. There's nothing else. Every line is either adding or subtracting the movement, you know. 
it's moving the eye in a certain direction, you know. Let's add any more detail to these jaggedy rocks and stones and things. Should, maybe it should be a little darker in some of these areas here. I want to preserve some of the little highlights. Hmm. Sometimes I'm just moving at this frantic pace. <laughs> I only have six minutes, probably five now. Maybe that'll just add to the feeling of energy in the piece, you know. Okay, some of these little strands that I drew, I need to uh, erase out. anti-smudge paper here. Special material. Created by highly paid scientists in a laboratory. Create the perfect anti-smudge material for an artist. called eight and a half by 11 printer paper. <sighs> All right, get a little bit more detail on the fingers down here if I can. The final detailing is really done in the inking stage, you know. There's only so much details I can indicate in pencil. Uh, maybe it could be cool to have grab my thicker pencil. Just a few shreddy things kind of fallen down there. I'll give that area a bit more contrast when I ink it. I'm just kind of popping out little highlights on the fingers there. Hmm. do some a little bit more finishing of the pencil work off camera here all right I'm gonna check my camera Let's see if it's turned off no it hasn't but I'm gonna restart it here okay Thanks for watching guys. Um, maybe uh, sitting and watching a, a drawing video, a half hour might seem like a long time, but actually, <laughs> actually drawing in that amount of time is not a long time. These videos aren't sped up or anything, so. Hopefully you guys were able to make some New Year's resolutions, uh, 
we always do that every year and then if we can actually accomplish some of them then uh, yeah well, it's better than nothing right I mean it is important to set goals in life and you know I wanted to create these videos that was a goal of mine um, nothing worth doing is is uh, an easy thing to do you guys hear that bell that means it has been a half hour but I'm still going here um, but there you go you, you see how at the beginning of the video let me stop this thing at the beginning of the video it was you know it, it was more of an impression and this is now more fine-tuned um, the final fine tuning again will be done in the inks, which are coming up shortly. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you share this video with your friends. Um, this is, I believe, episode 19, or is it 20? I, I keep getting that wrong too. But anyway, I'm going to be putting these shows out until episode 26. Hope you enjoy them. Um, and uh, without repeating myself, <laughs> I'm just going to end the show here. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one.